I love those stories about venues. I mean, um, when we do these rock tales, people often mention Batley Variety Club. <laughs> that, that was uh, legendary. And I think Glasgow Let's... Empire was always... Uh, always Lulu. Uh, does anyone know but, Lulu's story about... Yeah, I, I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. do that one. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. It, it, Lulu's... You know that one, do you? Yeah. I think we did it last time. I think we did it last time, yeah. But, but I mean, there's, there's always there's such great stories from, from that place. And, and there was, was it the new Bingley Hall in, in Stafford, which was where they used to have the, the local cattle market? So whenever there was a gig in the evening, the whole place absolutely reeked of, of, um, of farmyard smells, you know, dying. Well, you either had that or you had, or you had the smell of wrestling and wrestlers. Yeah. Because Northern clubs I used to play in in 1964, you'd, you'd say, when do I go on? And the guy say, you go on between bouts three and four. And you go, <laughs> bouts three and four? What is this? He said, it's the fucking wrestling ring, you idiot. <laughs> and so you had to walk in the middle of this wrestling ring and the smell, the sweat and the everything. I was foul. There was one any, in June any other that was particularly bizarre hot. venues, or, or what's the worst yeah. place any of you have ever played in? Hang on, I, I was touring in '72. I was touring America with Michael Darbo, who's doing a solo act, and uh, we're going all over the place. And at one point, we played this amphitheater in New Jersey, about a three or four thousand seater, and we were support act to Liza Minnelli and her orchestra, and she's unbelievably dull. So the music was awful. So hanging around is, is a, a chore just to be there for the evening. And I, I like investigating theatres. I like climbing around them and looking at them from different angles. And one night during her show, I'm climbing up in the lighting rig, inching along, just not caring about anything, just enjoying being somewhere different. And I suddenly realised I was above her changing tent. <laughs> I didn't know it, you know, it wasn't planned. And she suddenly ran off stage, finishing one song, into her tent, threw off her top to put the next one. And I'm staring down at her tent, <laughs> thinking, I don't want to be here. You know, I just froze, hoping nobody would see me. <laughs> Got away with it. But it but this, uh, this, Mo, that sounds like your defence. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't look, Your Honour. Yeah. <laughs> Got I to transcribe. No, no enjoyment out of it. I heard a lovely one the other day about uh, uh, from an engineer. Remain nameless, but it, it was a, a, a Shoko, you know, rig going in for a, a very big private wedding, and they were in a field, and they, they'd had to rent a, um, a, a generator, you know, one of these big show generators, which was parked outside the marquee and everything was sort of it wasn't a huge public event it was a private event and so they they had a band in there and a little mixing console and <laughs> and and apparently this generator was on a on a bit of a hill on a bit of a slope and whilst the band were on stage, someone knocked the handbrake off the generator, <laughs> which, which started rolling down the hill. And everything was sort of bell code connected to the mains coming into this generator. And basically the whole of the stage, all of the mixer, everything just went out <laughs> the side of the marquee, following the generator down the hill. Da -da -da -da. Oh, I love it. You, I don't know why I'm remembering early days. Uh, when we start out, we're very, we were in those days very naive. Nobody knew anything. And it was like end of skiffle. And um, my school band had elevated to the position where we could play this teenage show on Saturday morning at Wolverhampton Gomont. This was big league then. And uh, um, we'd lost our singers. We're, we're at a, a local school and the singers had left. So we had to audition another guy from, from the area. The audition song, God knows why, was the Banana Boat song. So <laughs> completely, completely irrelevant. And we thought, he's great, <laughs> he'll do. And he had to learn three songs, Jerry and the Pacemakers and a couple of other people. We come to do the show and I hadn't realized how nervous he was, but all the saliva had drained from his mouth and his tongue was sticking. So he began yodeling. If you're singing, how do you do it? It would be, how do? <laughs> and <laughs> it was embarrassing. And he ploughed through these three wretched songs. 
and then walked off. And you'd expect something, a little ripple of some appreciation, but there was silence, just 2,000 people mumbling. And then this voice from the back wafted across. And I, the reason I know this is I have a tape recording of it. And a very strong Wolverhampton accent, this voice said, I'll try and impersonate it. It's about time you fucked off. <laughs> 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 like critics. <laughs> Is anyone, uh, do you remember the College Club in Manchester? It was an awful cabaret place. It was one of our first gigs that we got. And we were just, instead of, instead of in those days, instead of a jukebox or records, they just put a band on playing hits of the day. And I was in this band. And, uh, you know, you could get watch the uh, watch the act, and this comedian came on, and he was woeful. This comedian, and he was, it was, uh, we were, our toes were curling. It was so bad because you could hear a pin drop. There's, you know, a hundred people in this room. And he, he was so awful, and he kept saying, he kept saying, but seriously, folks, uh, and then go into another unfunny joke, and it was just, oh god, it was torturous. And then he said, right, I've got, you know, he did his 20 minutes. He said, oh, right, I've got to go now. And the trio struck up and he sang, make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole place cracked up, uh, you know, yeah, of course. The cynical manx, you know, they, they cracked up laughing. And I thought maybe that's his gig. Just one big laugh at the yeah. end, you know, just uh, this is my, this is my set. Did you hear of a, or ever watch a, a, a terrible TV talent show called Sky Star Search? Oh, please. Yeah? Yeah, my Did son was on it. Go on. Oh, well, I was in the band behind the curtain. We, we, we backed everybody and uh, we had to do 35 songs on, on a Saturday and a Sunday. We did 70 acts over a weekend. It was exhausting. Two, two 12 hour days. Do you remember the name of the band leader? Well, there were two. There was Brian Gascoigne and also another guy. I forgot his name now. It's the other guy, I remember. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember. But um, we, our headphones had the, the feed from the band and from the artist, whoever they were, some singer or a conjurer, could be anything. And I'll, I'll digress for a second. There was a, an act on called Robert's World of Magic. Did you ever see this? It's been on YouTube. This guy, he was, he was an escapologist. He'd, he'd get himself into a big white sack and a <laughs> member of the public would tie a knot on the top. And then we'd be playing <laughs> sub James Bond music while he doesn't escape from this sack. <laughs> you'd see a hand doing that or a top of a head appearing in this. And finally, after three minutes of wrestling, uh, Keith Chegwin came over and just cut him out. He went... <laughs> 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 So anyway, we're, 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 um, we had our headphones had the band mix and the thing and the gallery so we could hear the director talking. It's very Dow Scott called Jim. And we're playing the intro to some woman's song and she could not find the way into the song. We didn't know how to start singing. And we didn't know how good she was or how terrible she was. And you could hear Jim shouting at her, but only for the gallery's sake, singing. Oh, sing, for Christ's sake, sing. You know, you know, this is rude at her. Finally, she starts singing. He goes, oh, for fuck's sake, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> While we're playing, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it was a strange show. They, they, they held auditions, but everybody passed. There was no filter. Hey, I thought you were talking about the American Star Search. It was <laughs> in the UK, yeah. This is LWT. Yeah. Very funny. God, I'm I, I used to get home. I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I got home and my f face hurt from laughing. It was that, that stupid. Weren't, weren't you on the panel of one of those, Chris? Of what? Uh, one of those Star Search shows. Didn't you, weren't you one of the judges at, in an early one? Oh God, you've got a good memory. No, it was um, BBC uh, Search for a Star. No, oh, no, yeah. it was um, uh, Carol. It was a Christmas thing, and it was uh, you had to judge the Christmas Carol of the That's year. That's right. Yeah, and it was uh, a lot of kids. It was all kids, and um, 
I was, they asked me if I'd do it. And I said, yeah. And then on the panel, there's me, Scylla Black, and Richard Stilgo. <laughs> A good mix. <laughs> As you do. I'm thinking, well, anyway, that all these uh, kids came on and, uh, you know, sang their little uh, Christmas carol and because uh, they had to have written it with some of uh, you know and we just uh, you know we I was one of the oh, God, I'd forgotten all about that amazing that you remembered that but uh, apparently the year after I did it there was a very little kid um, who became famous Alan no who was it I don't know if you'd say it it might sue me all oh, right um, <laughs> I don't know what do you think Greg, have you got... Yeah, go on. you got any decent lawyers? <laughs> uh, um, oh, yes. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a lovely one with a, you know, could you come and judge the, you know, your music? Could you come and judge the school, um, you know, instrument competition, you know, and went through when my... my kids were at school and turned up and it was you know everyone's walking on the stage to play their violin I had to judge which one was and we eventually got down to the the recorder and this little girl would, was coming out but she came out in tears because she had lost her music and she was you know we're, we're not sure she can actually do it but she's gonna have a shot at doing it without the music and so have a little bit and if she makes a couple of mistakes it's because she hasn't got the music because she's lost the music and this little kid walked up to the front of the stage with the recorder and went and nothing came out of it oh. and she looked at the oh music was rolled up inside the recorder oh, great. that's great <laughs> there was a mike there was another dusty one you i remember from you about the amplifier Oh, no, that was, to me, that was, yeah, that's probably the best one. I'll tell it to you quickly, guys. Yeah. Winter Gardens, Winter Gardens in Blackpool. We're doing a Sunday night concert there. And uh, we walk in. It's the first time that Tom and I have got little amplifiers, not bloody big amplifiers, little amplifiers, about two feet high for our guitars. So we set them up on the stage, either side of the three of us, and we start rehearsing with the band and everything else. So we finish a number, a voice from the back of the auditorium, which was blacked out, says, what are those things you've got on that stage? So I said, what things? He said, those things either side of you, those boxes. So Dusty said, they're bloody amplifiers. So he said, we haven't paid to have amplifiers. We paid to have you sing. So Dusty said, well, she said, they're part of the act now and they're staying. And a female voice goes, don't let her talk to you like that, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> and Dusty said over the mic, and you can tell that bitch to shut her mouth as well. <laughs> that was Harold Fielding, the impresario's wife. He said we would never work for him again, and we never did. <laughs> Good old Dusty. <laughs>